I just got another little project here to work on. This is another motorcycle part. And I've done this job before, but I can't recall if I ever put it on video or not. It was, uh, it was either earlier in the year or last year when I did, did this same thing. But anyway, what we gotta do, you got a, this is a, <clears throat> like a triple clamp for a motorcycle here. This is the top clamp. Really nice piece, it's all CNC machined. And this piece here is for a, a steering damper that goes on and I don't believe it's for this application. So what he needs is, he needs this to mount flush with the top of this clamp here. And you see that it can't do it because you've got this material here that's in the way. So I've got to mill these, these little standoffs here. I've got to mill those down to where this face here will pull down flat onto the clamp. And you've also got a, you've got a little pocket that's machined out here. So one of them will be a little bit longer than the other one. And then what the other, the last thing we'll have to do is this needs to bolt to it. We'll have, uh, we'll have a couple holes drilled here and on the back side of this going up into these lugs, I'll have a, a hole that's drilled and tapped so that you can actually uh, bolt this thing through there, through these two pockets here. And then of course the, uh, the nut, there's the nut here, will keep it all together. So as I said, I can't recall if I actually put this on a video or not, but I made a little jig a while back. This is a piece of aluminum I turned. And how I did the milling and drilling and tapping is that I machined a little register here to fit this machine register. Never mind the uh, precision grinding that was done on this. That, <laughs> that wasn't me. Uh, somebody's had their hand on it though, but anyway, it'll, it'll sit on there like that and it fits that machine register. And what I'll do is I'll get a washer and I've got one of my 5 8 flange nuts and pull it down, draw it up tight. We'll probably just hold this in the, in the, uh, the Kurt vise using a, an angle block, a, uh, a V-block. Get it squared up, do the milling, and then the drilling and tapping based off of our center line here. Okay, so that's what we got to do. Always, uh, always encounter these custom projects, that, these, uh, these things these guys come up with that need help with. So I'm here to give them a hand. So let's get the mill set up and see if we can do a little bit of, a little bit of milling and drilling. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing set up. I used a couple of my Sterrett V blocks behind the jig here and I've already got that tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this piece down on there. You can see the register here where it'll fit this. And I decided not to use another washer on top of this because I, I'm going to use this machine surface here where it pulls up flat. I'm going to use that as a as like a, a datum point whenever I'm doing some milling. So we'll go ahead and just use the uh, the flange nut. I believe that's how I did it last time, and give it a little a little snug there. All right. So what I want to do is. I want to indicate the back of this. I want to get this running nice and straight. In case you missed it, let me just show you. We've got, this is a fully machined part. So you've got this area here, which is parallel. You know what I mean? It's nice and straight. So we'll use this to indicate it straight here. What I'm going to do is just uh, visually get it kind of squared up first. And I've got a parallel here. And I'm just going to rest it on the back side. And I'm looking 
down the vise. I'm using the vise jaw here as a reference. This line, this mill, this slot that's milled in here, I'm using that as a reference point to get it really close. Right there is already really close, but I need to go that way just a little bit. Okay, I mean, we're really close there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get an indicator set up and we're gonna sweep across the back of it here. You could also use this parallel to indicate also. You could just set it against there and put a clamp on it. But um, I think I'm just gonna indicate it directly on these lugs back here. Okay, I'm gonna use my small Noga with my best test indicator. I'm gonna stick the magnet right here on the, the quill. Get the indicator set up kind of close here. just bring it into that let's see can you see it I believe so we'll bring the needle to that 15 we'll make a sweep all right it's on 15 thousandths very far let's see just a few thousandths I'm gonna bring that one to 15 and run it back across here now that was that got me pretty close just bumping it around by sight using that parallel so we're uh, two and a half thousandths off that's not bad at all. I mean, I mean, you could really just get away with that. Let's see. I'm gonna use this lead hammer and see if I can tap it. All right, we're back on 15. Well, it moved there. Just over half thou. You can see everything trying to move around on me as I tighten this up. All right, 15. All right, so that's about a thousandths and a half off, but Close enough. I'm just gonna live with that. That's showing a thousand saw. So I'm hoping that I've got this <clears throat> tight enough because I don't want another mishap when I'm doing some milling. Okay. We're gonna call that straight. So we'll come in and do some milling. I'll keep the cutter to the back side here so that if it does try to kick kick the part around it's going to hopefully twist it that way and push it around okay i grabbed i got a, a half inch high helix end mill that we're going to use that always works great for aluminum it's still nice and sharp <clears throat> we'll just take some light cuts maybe try a quarter inch of pass and see how it does this is, the, this is the side here that's gonna be higher than this one. This side we're gonna mill even with this face here. This side is gonna stick up 113 thousandths. I used my depth mic and uh, got a depth of that pocket from the top of the uh, triple clamp that's 113 deep. So right now I've got a 
a little over five eighths. And so this side here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, touch off and just take about a half inch, and then we'll um, we'll come over here and uh, touch this face with the cutter. Drop tail down 113, and that'll be our finished length there. Start with a light cut here and see, make sure everything does good. bouncing Just hand cranking both the hand wheels. Okay, that was a one eight cut there. I'm happy with it, so uh, I'm going to take a couple more cuts at one eight. We could probably take more, but I don't want to push it and risk moving the part, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and keep roughing this off, and uh, I'll bring it back. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch my cutter off on this face here. This is where it's going to sit flat, and I need this side 113 thousandths higher. Uh, 113 is the measurement that I got. I used my depth mic and measured the depth of the pocket on the triple clamp. So we'll make we'll make this side here, you know, even with that face, and this side will be 113 higher so I'm gonna touch off I'm gonna I'm gonna just come up and just touch this face right here <clears throat> and then I'm I need to lower the uh, lower the table 113 and I'm gonna stick my uh, steer it mag back indicator over here on the ways to make sure that I drop it accordingly because of the backlash this kind of job here is where a digital readout is very handy to have and it makes your job a lot easier you know, unfortunately, I don't have a digital readout yet. So we're doing it, um, you know, analog style. Okay. Just touching that face there. So I got to move my my way my way guard <laughs> out of the way so I can see this. I'm gonna put some preload on the 
on the dial here and get me a, a zero point at 12 o'clock established. And I know you guys probably can't see that. Maybe you can there. Okay. Hundred, ten. What I'm gonna do is go past it. I'm gonna come back up. Fifteen, fourteen. Okay, there's thirteen. Right there. Okay. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll mill this side here, and I'll bring the table back up to zero, and then we'll mill this side here. Sure, my guard doesn't mess with anything here. Even if it moves it, I can reset it and just bring it up 113. So there's our 113 side, and I can't m measure it with my depth mic. It's too big to get in here. I'd have to come up with another little way to measure it, but it'll work. Okay, so we're still at, and you can't see it. We're still at our uh, 113, so I'm going to go ahead and bring the table back up to my zero. And to be right there. Okay, and we'll go ahead and get this other side milled. Part's done. I'm gonna get some of these chips off here. Alright, our milling's done. Next step is we need to center up on it, come in here and do some drilling and tapping. 